Uh, last time we spoke, it was just mainly about our analytics. We're fortunate to have Sherrod, Dan, and, and Tim join us from the data side of our business to talk about what they've been doing there as well. Um, let me jump in and, and just going to start with three big announcements that I want to highlight from this week at Connect. Uh, the first is, as Mary mentioned with Stage, the foundation for AI is a critical, uh, critical element. Uh, it's ever more important in the, in the world of AI. Data is at the center of that foundation. Um, you know, this stat here is pretty telling. 96% of organizations don't believe their data is AI ready. Not a statistician, but that's pretty close to 100%. Means a lot of people feel like they're not ready for AI, their data is not in the ready state. Uh, the truth is, it's actually more ready than they know. It's just they don't have a platform or a way in which they can articulate that their data is ready and they have confidence in that data uh, as they start to think about AI use cases. So, uh, as we announced today, at uh, this week at Cl uh, Click Connect, the Click Talent Cloud enables this at scale, where <clears throat> with a, a product like this, you can produce uh, a, a, a modern data engineering stack that can do things no code, with code, uh, produce data sets that are ready for AI consumption. Uh, we announced the data products and the data marketplace uh, that make that uh, that make that possible. Uh, and and you know, this is really setting up the foundation for AI in the analytics side of our business as well. Uh, jumping ahead here, the other stat I'll throw at you is this. 80% of data is unstructured. So almost every organization on average, the majority of their data is unstructured format. Um, that means it's a, a huge untapped potential, un untapped source. 70% uh, of folks have not yet done anything with that content. And I'll give you another stat that's not on the slide here. Two thirds of those organizations expect to actually spend money on this in the next 12 months. So we've got a fertile opportunity with all that data. It's not been tapped yet and there's money ready to be spent and organizations poised to take advantage of that. Can I ask real quick? Because I think I saw on the first slide with the stat that it was from a McKinsey report. Is that correct? The 96% should be from our own. Oh no, you're right, that's McKinsey. I look so squinted really hard. Yeah, the yeah. other ones from your own? Where are the other stats from? Are they yes, this I believe is from our own. Okay. The the original, the 96% comes from McKinsey. That's a study that they produced. Uh, I'd have to go back and look at the date. Look like 24. 2023, September. Thank you. So, a little bit out of date, but still probably relevant. Uh, and then these stats, the 80, 70% here are from our own study that we commissioned. This went out to a bunch of uh, uh, CIOs and others that that were able to respond to uh, a study that we commissioned. Uh, this gives us some validation that this is a real market opportunity and there's real interest in uh, in this unstructured content. When it comes to this though, is the answer to uh, be able to handle unstructured data or is the answer to convert unstructured data to more structured formats or to you know tag it, metadata, et cetera? I mean, how do you approach the unstructured data question? So yeah, you've, you've asked a question where we're, we're, we're stratifying unstructured content into what do I do with the unstructured content on its own and can I extract from it or extract from it structured content that I can use with all my other structured data? And the answer is both of those use cases are completely valid. And we have customers that are doing, uh, are using unstructured content in both ways. Um, as we'll talk about here in a second, uh, a lot of knowledge workers have access to those unstructured content, document sets, uh, SharePoint sites, et cetera, that take forever to get information of. So this is why this week we've announced Click Answers, uh, which to your question is a way in which organizations can ask questions of unstructured content and get answers in natural language. So it addresses one of those two, those two use cases. Uh, we're super excited about this. It's a plug and play experience. It doesn't require you to set up the dozen components or so that constitute a RAG architecture and build this yourself. Uh, again, targeting business leaders, business personas that have a need to get access to content out of unstructured sources and aren't going to go and build and, and sort of maintain a system like that uh, on their own. It'll unlock new use cases, everything from, you know, hey, I, I need a knowledge assistant for my knowledge workers who are constantly working with unstructured data to use cases where uh, you know, I've got uh, new employees I'm onboarding and it takes forever to get them up and running because they're having to go and search through unstructured data, you know, uh, PDF files and, and documents. Uh, or even in-field technicians, people out in the field servicing, you know, potentially a big, uh, you know, appliance at a, at a site like this. And, 
you know, they're flipping through a manual, like not very efficient. Give them an, an opportunity to go through and, and ask questions in natural language is a far better and more efficient solution. So last thing I want to uh, touch on in terms of announcements here, uh, ChatGPT and the hyper on Gen AI has got all of our attention over here uh, on this new field, this new area of interest, whereas there's all these use cases that can be solved with structured data today. Uh, structured data is important because it's data we know well. We've invested years in, in curating and cleansing it. We use it for our reporting today. It's the prime opportunity, the prime place to start your journey on AI. Uh, so we call that the 90% of other use cases can be solved today with those, with those technologies. Uh, and for those who are familiar with, with, with Click Cloud and our platform, we've had AutoML on our platform now for just about two years. Uh, about 2,000 customers and partners have now built over uh, 250,000 AI models using this platform. Um, 11,000 of them are in production. And in some cases, they're using the real-time applications where they can query these models in real time. 18 million predictions have been generated through that mechanism uh, as of today. Uh, so wide adoption, this solves a lot of really key use cases for, for organizations. Uh, and what we announced this week at Connect is ways in which we're making AutoML ever more efficient, ever more productive for uh, the users that are using it today. Uh, things like having more thorough and deeper analytics so you can understand the strengths and weaknesses of these models as you're, built, as you're building them, as well as uh, better and more intelligent optimizations through that modeling process, meaning we engineer all the features for you. We select which features are most important and create those and build those into the models. Uh, we employ sampling techniques where it's appropriate so that you get to that best model faster so you don't have to go through typically the five iterations of that model before you actually feel like it's ready for uh, production. So a lot of announcements this week at Connect. Those three are some of the top around some of the stuff we're doing with AI. And uh, really looking forward to getting those in front of you because this is all about showing you, not telling you. What's the, uh, on the, because you mentioned 250,000 models have been, you know, created in AutoML. Is the number growing, the gap of models that are being productionized versus, versus tested and created? Like, is that number, is the gap becoming bigger or is it becoming smaller? Yeah, that's a great question. So the question is about the number of experimentations that are going on and actually how many of those are translating into something that's being used. That gap has gotten smaller, I guess is the right way to say that, meaning uh, early on, when this first that feature first came out, everyone was experimenting, right? Because it was their first foray. Now we're seeing a lot of things getting put into production, real use cases, real customers generating real value. Uh, good example: Appalachian Regional Hospital. They got a model in production. It's, it's yielding. It's a patient no-show type of scenario. Millions of dollars in top-line savings. Um, you know, so the, the the real use cases where they, you know there's material value being generated through those models. Of course, it's iterative, and they're always refining it. Um, but yeah, a lot more put into production versus, hey, this is just an experiment. 